Hello, and welcome everybody to another episode of r slash pro revenge. Before we jump into the stories, I, your official host for the evening, Ryan from Reddit Voice, would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and the subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on all the latest videos. How I got my boss fired when he tried to fire me. Long time lurker, first time poster. This is a bit long, but I promise it's worth the ride. TLDR at the bottom. This story was posted on a different site by me about a year ago, but this sub seems to be the perfect place to share it again. I've added some additional details that prior commenters were asking for last time I posted this. Starting out, let me explain why there wasn't a mass walkout and why I'm the only one that quit despite us basically being terrorized and treated like slaves. The job market was in shambles in my city at that time with something like a 40% unemployment rate. I knew someone with a doctorate degree in theoretical physics working at a local fast food joint as it was literally the only place hiring. The city had quick access to four research universities, but he got downsized due to lower admission rates. He is now the dean of the physics department at his former school. To quit any job, no matter how bad, was financial suicide and to guarantee that you would not find a new one. I always worked customer service, food service, and hospitality since I was 14. At 24, I decided it was time to find a job with benefits and potential for career advancement. So I took a job stocking shelves overnight with a global monstrosity that started out as a mom and pop store. I felt right at home. I worked hard and constantly took the worst jobs and the worst days off to make sure I would be there on the weakest staffing days to rub elbows with management. If there was anything that occasionally came up with no one on the shift was trained to do, I would come in on my day off without pay to get trained how to do the task, like keys, paint, accounting issues, etc to become less disposable and more versatile. It worked, and 10 months in, I found myself with an offer to promote to low-level management starting January 1st. Starting the weekend before Thanksgiving, the overnight manager started to understaff shifts to preserve his end-of-year bonus, and acted surprised when people called out. He would then bully us into staying over with threats of write-ups for not finishing our assigned stalking tasks. Upper management was notorious for just signing off on write-ups without looking into their validity. So each staff being assigned 13 plus hours of labor to complete alone in 6 hours, while typically it was approximately 4.5 hours to account for tending to customers as well, was no defense. Since an employee could only get two of those write-ups in a rolling 13 month period before termination, we all would stay over as well as skip our breaks and lunches to finish. Those write-ups were also less job-threatening, as he would simply turn a blind eye to us clocking out for a break slash lunch and returning to work. But there was a catch. Since any approved overtime would count against his $73,000 bonus, approximately 11 cents per approved hour, he would never file the approval forms for the OT. This meant that it was considered unapproved, meaning that we were required to get approval to cut hours off our regular shifts to equal out what we stayed over. He, of course, never approved us to cut those hours. This was resulting in weekly write-ups from the same manager for unapproved overtime on those of us that made it to work every day despite the weather and missed holiday get-togethers with our families. Every week, we would get our write-up and he would get praise for getting everything done with less approved staffing hours than typically allocated. Thankfully, write-ups for unapproved OT didn't carry a lot of weight, but for three months, they counted against you for your points of promotion opportunities. This went on until the week before Christmas. When I got my weekly write-up, I was told by the store manager, who offered me my promotion, I would be suspended for overtime abuse. The next time my manager submitted a write-up for unapproved overtime hours, determined to not lose my promotion, I started telling the manager no. The second time I refused to stay over without him signing an overtime approval form and giving me a physical signed copy before I hit overtime, he wrote me up for abusive actions towards a member of management, and actions with intent to undermine the integrity of management and store policies. This instantly cost me my promotion, which greatly upset me, and then, like the idiot he is, he left me alone in his office to sign the write-ups and the acknowledgement that I was no longer promoting. Initially, I was just going to accept it and resolve myself to spending the next 13 months working my tail off for minimum wage and go up for promotion as soon as they fell off. 
When I started reading the acknowledgement form, I found I was not eligible to promote to management until I was right up free for five years. This meant six years and one month before I could even try to get promoted again. All because I followed policy. So, rather than sign it, I wrote fuck off and sharpie across his brand new desk, which he got for being such a great manager. Walked out of his office, handed him my vest and name tag, shredded the write-ups and tossed them into the air like confetti, and told his no longer smug face that it was now my personal mission to get him fired. He lost his cockiness when it sunk in, I'd just quit. I could see little beads of panic sweat forming on his forehead, as he realized that the only person capable of performing certain highly essential functions for his shift was walking out the door. He shouted after me, telling me that he could talk to the general manager and see if he could get the time frame cut down to three years. He offered to approve all of my overtime for the rest of the season, offered me a cut of his bonus, and several other offers. I can't remember. Honestly, if he'd offered to withdraw the write-ups, which was still 100% an option that he never offered, I wouldn't have accepted it, but I might not have followed through on my threat. I was too angry and too determined, and I didn't care if I became homeless as long as I never had to work there again. Now, how did I get him fired? Well, due to certain ADA requirements, I was permitted to carry a voice recorder with me at work so I could record important meetings, announcements, and reminders. When I got written up the first time for unapproved OT, I started recording his requests to both me and my coworkers. I never used them to dispute the write-ups, but I never deleted them either. So I uploaded all of the recordings to my computer, nearly 18 hours of audio, and sent it to the home office, CCing every store manager and compliance officer in the district. When I went in for my last paycheck, he was long gone. I was offered my promotion back, but I declined. The regional director then offered me my old manager's job with a 73 grand hiring bonus. Wonder where that came from. But I still refused and said I was never returning to retail. My former manager boss laughed and told me that everyone returns eventually, and when I did come see her and she would find me a management spot somewhere. After five months of being unemployed, living with my mom and barely surviving, I moved to another state and got a job working in a state prison as a guard and am very fulfilled. TLDR, after working hard to earn a promotion and my penny-pinching tyrant of a manager forced me to lose it. So I reported his shady practices and got him fired and was offered his job. I refused and am far happier now. Edit. Wow, I never expected to have any upvotes. At over 150, I feel very blessed, especially for my first Reddit post ever. Thank you so much for the karma love. My ex-advisor plagiarized my work, so I exposed her and that cost her her job. Just found out about this subreddit and had to share this story. The initial reason for the revenge happened in 2013, but the revenge only happened in 2017. I'll keep everything vague as not to be recognized. For context, back in 2013, I was a graduate student pursuing my master's degree. That was my last year in the program. We had 24 months to finish all the work and dissertation. My advisor was a professor who was very well known and experienced on my field of work. Let's call her Janet, fake name. Janet and I worked together with research since my college days, as I became part of an undergraduate research with her. At that point, we had been working for about four years, and as any advisor-student relationship, we more had our disagreements quite often. Janet was used to doing her experiments a certain archaic way. I knew there were better uses of our grants money and always tried to push towards a more advanced method, especially correlating data collection and statistics. However, our relationship was always good. I knew her husband and had been to her house numerous times. She was a little set on her ways, but we managed to make good progression on our field. Anyhow, by the end of 2013, I presented my dissertation to the department and was approved with flying colors. My data still wasn't published in any paper, as I wanted to have more analysis in different areas to make a more robust and better paper. But with that said, my dissertation was published, and by all reasons, that is my work and my experiments. After I got my MS, I decided to pursue a PhD. While I was still going to work in the same field, I wanted to use different techniques, and thus talked with Janet about going to pursue a PhD under a different professor in another university. She always encouraged me to do better and look for ways to diversify my views. 
I went ahead and contacted a professor outside my country in another university to pursue my PhD. I got approved and soon moved away. For the next two years, I still kept in contact with Janet, but on the third, she stopped responding. Initially, I thought she had changed her email or something, but didn't think much of it. Time flew by, and in 2017, while reading papers and writing my own, I came across a paper that was strangely similar with my research. Interested in it, I opened it up to read. For my shock, it was a paper by my ex-advisor. She was up as advisor and another guy, who from his curriculum is her current master's student. Reading the title, I thought, hey, that's neat, she continued researching it. But boy, was I wrong. Reading the paper, I got increasingly angry. That wasn't a new research, it was my research. My data was all in that paper, even my graphs and tables. Initially, I thought, oh well, she's also an author and if she's citing it, there shouldn't be a problem. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. My name was nowhere near that paper as they claimed the research as original. Now I was livid. I sent an email to Janet confronting her, which was never replied to. However, I am not a pushover and will never allow people to claim my own work as theirs. She made a mistake by using my data. I'm a researcher and I keep everything I ever worked on saved in an external SSD, encrypted and on my own possession. All cataloged with date entries and even, hand, my own dissertation to prove my work. In my country, research is financed by the governmental grants. I wrote an email to the dean of the grants institution, explaining the situation with proof of everything. I also sent an email to Journal In, that which was published, contesting their paper and explaining everything. It didn't take longer than 15 days for me to get a follow-up. The institution responsible for the grant was furious. They cut all financial aid for her and her student, and made a formal requirement to the university requesting her immediate termination. The journal retracted the paper and is now suing her for plagiarism. Now, after all these years, I learned that she was indeed fired and haven't been able to work in the field ever since. I never met her again and have no intention of ever doing so. Now, my work is published and I'm recognized by my contributions in the field. Maybe that was a petty thing to do, but I couldn't allow people to get away with claiming my work as their own. Edit. Wow, didn't expect so many replies. Thank you for the words. A few things, the only reason I said it was petty, is because since she is also an author, she has the right to publish it, but she needed to include me on the paper, which she did not do. Also, there are laws in place on my country that allow the journal to sue her. This is not an international journal, and that's why that happened. I work with the medical research for those that asked, but I can't share the paper as that would easily identify me. Another thing, people have been questioning my terms. On my country, a master's candidate need to present a dissertation and a PhD candidate needs to present a thesis. Sorry if I wasn't clear enough. Cheers. And with that, my friends, we've reached the end of today's r slash pro revenge. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like on the video and also subscribe. As always, my name's Ryan, the official host here at Reddit Voice, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.